Check out this beautiful Mayonnaise Duvel guitar. Mayonnaise. It has got a beautiful green top. Oh, it looks like flame maple. Ebony fretboard. Multi-laminate neck. Now this guitar came in this week for repair, and this is now the fifth fake guitar that is brought in to me for repair this year. I've officially seen now a fake Gibson Les Paul this year, a Fender Custom Shop Strat this year, a Jim, Avenue's Jim, a Sur guitar, and now this Mayonnaise. I'm here with Michael, and this is the official How You Say Mayonnaise. And that's how you say it. So, how do I know it's fake? Especially this guitar, I have actually never played a real Mayonnaise guitar before. I've seen them at the NAMM show, but I've never really played one. Well, today I want to talk about whether or not you might have a fake guitar and not know it, because it seems to be becoming a bigger and bigger trend. Now, I'm sure you're asking yourself, why would somebody do a knockoff of this guitar? And of course, one, the guitar is about $3,000 new, so that makes it valuable. The second thing is, there's not a lot of people with experience with this, so if you give somebody the opportunity, uh, they might think that uh, they're getting a great buy because they don't know what to look for. It's not like a Gibson or a Fender where so many people see them, they can start telling quickly what's wrong with them. Now, this was probably bought on one of those horrible websites like uh, AliExpress and stuff. And I know some of you guys have opinions about fake stuff and some of you guys own fake stuff, but here's the deal. If that's what you want to do, you know, that's fine. I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. But me personally, I don't buy fakes and I don't like fakes. The first thing is this has a veneer top. Now, the uh, real uh, Mayonnaise uh, guitars do not have plastic binding. They have an actual piece of maple, a quarter inch piece of maple on the top. That's the first sign that there's a problem. However, because Mayonnaise is a custom company, who's to say somebody didn't request binding and a veneer top, maybe one all mahogany body? That doesn't tell you anything. So that gives you a sign. The second thing that I noticed right away was the frets. The fret job is very cheap. They weren't rounded over. There wasn't anything that kind of said, hey, wow, this is a great guitar. There also, the reason this guitar came to the shop was it had dead spots and fret sprout. Fret sprout isn't a big determiner. I've seen high-end guitars get fret sprout, but not the dead spots like this guitar has. The other thing is the nut is installed incorrectly. It's like crooked. The tuning keys are inexpensive. The routering on this was horrific. You can see the big gap right there. And of course, uh, there's like bowing in the plastic where these screws weren't put in correctly. The furls look okay. There's nothing flagging me there. Okay. Oh, this is such crap. A couple things to note. Uh, obviously, there was no serial number on the back of the headstock. This multi laminate neck is actually made to look like it's Purple Heart or some kind of dark. Uh, kind of wood like mahogany and then maybe maple stripes, but it's actually two mahogany stripes on a maple neck Look, We're looking at the bottom of the neck. The first thing you're going to notice is this this is wider here than it is there Here's the funny part. They actually it's a five-piece neck one two three four five But these stripes are not what you see. They don't actually line up correctly. You can see where <laughs> They didn't even center this up and on top of that, uh, they use stain to stain this. There's a goopy paint there. This is just a horrible, uh, cheap truss rod cover, cheap guitar. Even the, the, uh, the way this is painted on is pretty inexpensive. So what are we looking at? Let's take it apart. So the first thing obviously is cheap pickups. That's not a good sign. Uh, that's something that you can obviously figure out really quickly. I know what you're thinking. You could spot a fake guitar a mile away. You know, just look at it. But the reality is there's something more psychological going on with fake guitars than you realize. The majority of people that I've met in my life that have bought fake guitars all have one thing in common. There was a good con attached to it. Let me give you an example. A good con puts a person, a buyer, in a sense of urgency. The person selling the guitar is getting divorced and they need to unload the guitar very quickly. 
Or the one I saw this year that was really interesting was it was a Les Paul. It was a four thousand dollar Les Paul, and it looked like somebody took and smashed it with a hammer. Now the seller said it was dropped, and because it was dropped, it was now devalued. The buyer used, I thought, good logic. They looked at it, basically a four thousand dollar Les Paul with some damage, and thought, okay, it's about five hundred dollars worth of repair. The seller said, I'll let it go for a thousand, and the buyer's like, well. That's a great deal because once I repair it, I only have fifteen hundred dollars into it, and it's about a two to three thousand dollar used Les Paul. So again, when he got it and figured out it was fake, it was that con. It was somebody putting him in a different mindset. So in those cases, when those guitars are being sold, the buyer doesn't feel like they have a lot of time to make a decision, but the deal is so good that it's a no brainer and to go ahead and go forward with it. So I want you guys to think about that when you're looking at guitars. Those deals that are too good to be true, especially ones that have a, even have a realistic story, you're going to have to rely on yourself more than anything else. And the one thing you want to do is do exactly what I'm talking about. Learn about the quality of guitars, not brands. Don't become an expert on a brand because that's what they're copying. What they're not copying is the quality details. Every time I see a fake, sure they put the logo on and they get the shape right and they get the colors right, but they never get quality right. And if you're really paying attention, none of these fakes are as good as an average, inexpensive $200 guitar. So when you're looking at guitars, don't just go, okay, it's high end and it's a great deal, or even if it's not a great deal. Look at the instruments, learn to look at what's quality and what's not quality, and then make your own assessments. One thing I like to do whenever a client brings me a guitar and we discover it's fake is ask them if we can brand the guitar fake to ensure that this doesn't happen to anyone ever again. Another thing that you can do after we brand it is ask them if I can remove the logo since that's the intellectual property and it doesn't belong on this guitar. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and remove that as well. Now once I, once I do that, I want to make the guitar play even better. So this guitar, that stupid finish on the neck was thick and it felt weird. It actually had different levels to the different colors. So we're going to strip all the finish down and make sure the neck feels fantastic and then put a light stain on it just to give it a new look. The guitar is mostly done. I've done with the aesthetic parts. I just have to finish up the crown and level and the setup. Uh, I wanted to show you where we ended up with it. That's what it looks like with the finish removed. And uh, we added the burned in fake in the neck. And of course, it's also there right there on the body. And of course, underneath the pocket. Now, since the truss rod cover also said devolve, we removed that and I put a KYG one there right there for Know Your Gear. We removed their trademark logo here. So the only thing really now at this point is, is tricking you is the headstock and of course the look. Obviously branding it fake will make it to where someone can't be duped or tricked again. I also think the neck feels a lot better unfinished. And something that hit this home with the fake guitars is this channel is not a small channel by any means, but it is not a large channel. We're almost at about 40 million views and almost 200,000 subscribers. And the reason I thought that was worth mentioning is we have about four or five online companies that have ripped off our logos and sell our shirts as well. And the reason I point that out is to point out that it doesn't take a whole lot of money to motivate somebody to make fakes. They can't be making a huge amount of money stealing our shirts, but still it's enough money to warrant them to do it. So like these companies, you know, you, you don't think that they're going to knock off guitars, but if they can make a buck, they'll do it. As always, I want to thank you guys for spending some time with me today. If you enjoy these videos, you can always subscribe and see more. And until next time, know your gear.